Welcome to part two of The Waldenseys, the forgotten forerunners of the Protestant Reformation. Hi, I'm Mike Avalon. The last time we were together, we looked at the Waldenseys in their location, and we also studied their lifestyle way up in the mountains of the Piedmont. And then we saw how they defended their church and their school from invaders. But in this program, we're going to look at the Waldenseys in their persecution and how it applies to Bible prophecy and also how it applies to us at these end times. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, is called the faith chapter. And in that chapter, it talks about that there were men of valor, men of great strength, men that fought valiantly in battle. And it's interesting that that chapter is split up into two parts. The first part talks about how God's men and women fought valiantly by faith and won. But in the last section, it talks about how God's people died valiantly in battle. As far as earth is concerned, as earthliness is concerned, the Waldenseys were eventually losers and they lost the battle. But in the books of heaven, they were winners. In this section, we'll be talking about the persecution of the woman and the location of where so many gave their lives for the truth. In Revelation 12, we see an epic story of a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head seven stars. The woman symbolizes the church. The sun is a symbol of Christ, while the moon under her feet is the types and shadows of the Mosaic law pointing to the Christ or the Messiah that would come. Then the vision reveals that the woman is pregnant with a man-child, which is Christ, and that he would rule the nations with a rod of iron after he was caught up to God in heaven. After this, we see a dragon appear on the scene, having seven heads and seven crowns, and also ten horns on his heads. This is none other but Satan in the form of pagan Rome. It's a historical fact that Satan wanted to kill Christ at his birth, and he waited for this opportunity. And thus it was, that the demon-possessed Herod tried to kill Christ by exterminating all the males two years and under. After Christ laid down his life for the sins of the world under the pagan Roman power, and then resurrected three days later, and went up to heaven to his father, Satan saw that he could not touch him anymore. So he turns on the woman and persecutes her under pagan power. At this point, Satan sees that the more Christians he kills, the more Christians come up. So he turns on the woman again from a counterfeit church that calls itself Christian. Yes, it's called Christian, but it's a mixture of pagan practices with Christian names to disguise it. So this is where we see that the papal church persecuted the pure woman or church that did not go along with its dictates. Then Revelation tells us that the woman flees into the wilderness. In Revelation 12 verse 6 it says, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And that's twelve hundred and sixty years that God's people had to flee into the wilderness during the time of the Dark Ages from 538 to 1798. And it's interesting, a day equals a year, so that twelve hundred and sixty days is actually twelve hundred and sixty years according to the prophecy according to Numbers 14 and Ezekiel 4. One of the most prominent stories of the woman in the wilderness was seen in the Walden Seas. The wilderness in Bible prophecy symbolizes a place of obscurity where the pure word of God would be kept safe during papal corruption. And then in verse 14, the Bible tells us how the woman fled into the wilderness. In verse 14 it says, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Here again this prophecy shows up again. There's 42 months in Daniel. There's time, time and half a time, three and a half. All these numbers come up to the same time period, 1260 years of papal suppression. Wings symbolize great speed, and the wings of an eagle tells us that God's people would be located in a high elevation. And then in verse 16, the Bible goes on and tells how the earth helps the woman. In verse 16 it says, And the earth helped the woman, 
and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So as the papacy was pouring out its, its military soldiers upon the Walden Seas and as they were pouring out false doctrines, God prepared a place for God's people that they would be able to escape and have religious freedom for this certain amount of time. Like the story in the Bible of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, when the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up those that were against Moses, recorded in Numbers 16, so the earth symbolically swallowed up the heirs of the papal church, which also was a corruption from within the church. So it was in these high mountains that the truth was left unadulterated from the new theology that was running rampant in large populations in Europe. Then the Bible tells us how God's grace was poured out upon these people. In verse 11, it says something very interesting here. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Not even death would separate these people from their Savior. This is an experience that we're going to have to have at these end times. The next place of research is to the Church of the Cave, which is only one of the hiding places that the Waldenseys fled to during papal persecution. I wondered to myself what it must have been like running to this hiding place with women and children, not to mention the older family members, down this slippery, narrow path. The opening of this cave is very small, but it opens into a very large cavern. Well, we're here at the Church of the Cave, and this is a very, very special place because this is where Waldenseys came to escape um, when they were being attacked. They came here so they could worship and have religious freedom in the bowels of the earth here. So, Ron, tell us a little bit about this place. And we have Adriano here. He's a Waldensian. Yeah a guide and he's the one that take, brought us here and he's uh, helped me before when I came and took me to some very interesting historic places. Unfortunately I don't speak Italian and uh, he's still learning English so we're we're just uh, kind of using sign language today but we're going to go inside this cave and see what it was like to be actually be in here and worship. Some All people right. have claustrophobia because it's a little narrow going in but yeah. when you get in there it's, it's nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. So we have some friends that are in there. Let's go meet up with them. Okay, let's right. do. All right, let's go. Lead the way. Having the torches in hand, it made us feel like we were Waldenseys as we climbed into this cave. This narrow passageway leads to the opening of the large underground church. As you can see, this cave has small corridors to allow light to help loom in the way. Here we are in, in one of the caves that the Waldensian used to gather and meet, perhaps to worship, escape persecution, to pray. It is nice to be here, but, but I imagined that it was not nice by the grace of God they endured persecution and suffering for righteousness. May we imitate their example. These people love God so much that they were willing to give up everything for the truth. Well, we're here in the Church of the Cave. Ron, Hector, this is very special to me. I know it is for you. Sure is. Uh, how people really had to give up a lot to worship God. And and this is the again, this is a geographical location 
the woman in the wilderness, a place for her, a refuge from the serpent, the dragon that was trying to destroy that woman, which is the pure church of God. That's right. I imagine the people gathering here coming quietly into the place so no one would find out that they were here. And then the ministers exhorting people to be faithful, to be loyal to God, and from praying and pleading to God that they will be protected from the enemies and that they will be faithful to the very end. Mm -hmm. So that was that was awesome. And it's a privilege for us to be here and to be part of that history. Yeah, it's for me it's a thrill to be here again. You know, some people think that in order to worship, you have to have a fancy church. Mm -hmm. And a lot of I'm not saying it to be critical, but a lot of denominations, even including uh, some that we know personally. And yet, uh, we know that in the last days, times are going to be tough. And, uh, you know, uh, there are many statements that we, from inspiration, that uh, Reformation times are going to be repeated again, and we're going to be in similar situations. And so, personally, I believe that we should focus our finances more Mm -hmm. on, on uh, spreading the gospel and uh, uh, Bibles and, and, and helping missionaries that are risking their lives right now mm -hmm. to give the three angels message rather than to build up our churches. But I think this this uh, cave here where there's history, it's like the voices are still ringing in my ears from what happened in this cave. And so I, I just think that we should focus more on the message and not on the buildings. Yeah. Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I'm in the midst of them. So it doesn't matter where you're at, if you're by a river, or if you're in a cave, or if you're in a church. If we worship God in spirit and truth, then we know that His presence is going to be with us. Okay. Yeah, this is cold in here. There's no, not too cold, but I mean, there's no heater, and there's no light. But yet, uh, this is where people worship, and God heard their cry. And you know, I'm also reminded that in the book, Historical Sketches of Seventh-day Adventists in Europe, it's hard to find that book, but I have a copy of it. And it says in there that often Jesus met with them in the caves. Personally, he met with them. You know, we talk about the Second Coming. But he came and he came to John and Patmos, he came to Paul, you know, and Saul, and, and uh, he was converted on the way to Damascus. But it says often he came. I don't know how many times, but often he came and he worshipped and he met, she said that he met with the Waldenses as Jesus met with the two uh, people on the way home from Emmaus. Mm -hmm. And so I wondered maybe in this very cave that Jesus could have met with him. You know, we don't know, probably. But in some other caves, we know that this isn't the only one. Oh no, I'm sure it happened many times. As the torches began to burn out, it was time for us to leave this amazing place where strong faith once lived. It's my prayer that we and God's people will return to this primitive godliness. As I climbed out of this cave, I remember that Jim Arabito filmed here the program called Maybe on Sunday. It was in this exact spot that he and his companions sat as they talked about the history of the Waldenses. I felt so blessed to be here. Leaving from the valley town of Bobbio Police, we travel up this very narrow road. These very narrow roads are actually Waldensian paths that have been slightly widened for motor traffic.
As you can see, there are no guardrails to protect you from falling straight down off the precipice. Even this climb must have been very treacherous for fleeing Waldenseys. We eventually arrive at the trailhead that leads to the place called the Invincibles. Okay, so here we are uh, going up on a very famous uh, trail called the Invincibles. Uh, we just drove up a really scary little road, a paved road that we're standing on right here from uh, Bobbio uh, Pelice, Pelice. And uh, we're going to go up into a, a very famous place where in, in uh, 1686, when the Duke of Savoy uh, was uh, uh, Victor, Victorio Amadeus, uh, he was the... Uh, a nephew of Louis the 14th and when the uh, Edict of Nantes was revoked and uh, the uh, protection on the Protestants was done away with uh, there was a big massacre that took place and a hundred uh, approximately a hundred Waldenses came up in this uh, trail that we're going to go on and were able to escape the, the massacre and one of them left behind his diary and later on they were able to uh, I was able to be included in some of the history books. As we approach this stone house, we have a sense of the solitude in this amazing fortress made by God. Ron tells us that this is a stronghold for the Waldenses when they were under the sentence of death by the Duke of Savoy. And uh, it's an uh, incredible spot because we're surrounded like a big bowl of uh, pyramid uh, mountains, sharp peaks and uh, there is uh, rocks everywhere. Even at the top of this mountain, there are still remains of house retreats that the Waldenseys once lived. Wow, what, what a place this is. Just from here you can see the many caves where the Waldenses used to hide many, many years ago. It was from these holes in the rock that the watchmen could see invaders coming. And as you will see, there are turrets in the rock to shoot from. Is the Bastoni man is the wasting, my friend, my friend? Do you feel lonely and wish it come to an end? Reach out and 
has covered you, shadows have caused you to sin. Look to the Well, we're here in Lursuna. This is uh, northern Italy, and uh, we met up with this wonderful man, uh, Stefan. I think that's how you say it. His ancestry goes back quite a ways, and uh, he's related to someone very famous in Waldensian history. And uh, who was that, that person that was so famous? ¿Quién es esa persona que fue muy famosa en la historia de Waldense? Bueno, aquí estamos en eh, La Llanavela. Aquí, here is a place called Janabella. Ah. Y um, el nombre Josué Janabel para los valdenses es un personaje muy importante. Ah, for the Valdensian community, the name Joshua or Janabel uh -huh, mm -hmm. is very important and prominent. Um, nos tenemos que ubicar en el periodo de las grandes uh, persecuciones valdenses, okay. en el 1600. We have to go back to the uh, years of 1600s, when there was a lot of persecution against mm -hmm. the Waldenses. Um, desde que los Valdenses adhieren a la Reforma Protestante en 1532, in, in 1532, when they come together with the Reformation, mm -hmm. desde ahí en adelante, o sea, todo el 1500 y el 1600, fueron dos siglos de mucha persecución, de gran sufrimiento, a causa de haber eh, adherido precisamente a la reforma protestante. Salieron de la clandestinidad y eso llevó a que el mundo se les fuera encima. ¿verdad? Well, since they joined with the reformation, uh, what happens is that there was a lot more persecution and suffering mm -hmm. for the Waldensians. Before they were a clandestine movement, mm -hmm. uh, they were not very much known, but from that moment on, they became very well known and famous. Mm -hmm. since the Reformation was already going on. So from the oh, 1600s and 1700s, there was a lot of persecution. So all of a sudden their name became very visible to, right. to the world, uh, through Europe anyways. Now they were out in the open. Uh -huh. Y entonces, eh, a raíz de, de este periodo de, de gran dificultad, eh, nos ubicamos aquí en, en el Valle de Lucerna, con la familia Janabel. So I want you to keep in mind that since that moment on, this is where the Janabella family used to be, in okay. this place. Una familia más del, de la comunidad valdense. It was just another family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Los valdenses originalmente eran alrededor de uh, 840 uh, apellidos. Uh, originally there were 840 last names for the Waldensians. Mm -hmm. Y uh, mm -hmm. la familia uh, Janabel era originalmente Genius Janabel. So the apellido, family, apellido compuesto. Janabel is, is uh, the last name, Janabel is a combined last name. Um, Descendientes del Barba Valdense eh, Bartolomé Genius de Bobbio Pellice. They were descendants from a minister uh, that came from Pellice. Que fue eh, quemado en la hoguera en 1356. Okay. 1356, that pastor is burned at the stake. Oh, man. In Bobbio Pellice. In Bobbio Pellice. Sí. Esta familia desciende del Barba Valdense. So this family came out of that man. Mm. Y a mediados del 1500, 1500s, eh, se trasladan de Bobbio Pellice a, es, a este lugar. They come from Bobbio Pellice to this place. Okay. 10 kilometers de acá. It's, a, it's about 7 miles away. Mm -hmm. okay. Aquí, eh, se establece en una casa que está aquí arriba. There's a little house up on the top. Mm -hmm. eh, un hombre llamado eh, Jean Genius Janabel. Un hombre, an, an, a man named Jean, or John, Genius mm -hmm. Janabel. El padre de Josué Janabel. He was the father of the famous Janabel. Oh. Ahora, ¿quién es Josué Janabel? So who was Joshua Janabel? Josué Janabel era un, uh, un valdense. Joshua Janabel, he was just another Waldensian. Hijo de una familia proveniente de Bobbio Pellice. Uh, he came from a family that is settled here, but before here they were in Bobbio Pellice. Se establecieron aquí a mediados del 1500. Around 1500 they, they moved here. Y cultivaban esta, esta, esta zona, era una familia que estaba 
medianamente bien. It, it was a family that cultivated the land. They were kind of a middle class family. Mm -hmm. eh, cuando Josué contrae matrimonio con Catherine Durán de Aurora. Eventually, uh, Joshua married a lady by the name of Catherine Durán. Eh, construye esta casa en 1632. En 1632, he, or John Abel, himself, built this house with his own, with his own hands. hands. Wow. Aquí eh, él cultivaba viñas, Grapes, miel honey, y eh, productos de la granja uh, and different products, uh, from the land. y uh -huh. eh, llevaba sus productos al mercado de Lucerneta. And then he would take the products to the little town of Lucerneta. Un pequeño mm -hmm. pueblito allí cerca. A village not too far from here. Y entonces ahí vendía sus productos. And then he sold whatever he had. Y uh, él era anciano de la iglesia de Rora. He was an elder in the church eh, of Rora. Se ocupaba de, de asistir espiritualmente a sus hermanos de la comunidad. And his work in the church was to take care of the spiritual life for the members. Era una persona mm, de profunda fe, temeroso de Dios. He had a, a, a deep faith in God. He feared God. Inteligente. Smart. Y, uh, y tenía el respeto y el cariño de toda la comunidad. And he had earned the love and respect of all the community. Y mm. aquí construye la casa y vive serenamente con su familia. He built the house here and then he had a, a decent life here with his family. Um, tenía dos, uh, dos hijas, mujeres. He had two daughters y un hijo varón. and one son. Y vivieron relativamente en paz hasta la llamada masacre de la Pascua Piemontesa okay. de 1655. And they were here in peace until what is called in history the massacre of Easter. On the Easter of 1655, many Waldenses were massacred in their valleys by the order of the Duke of Savoy, which hired the French army to destroy the Waldenses. Well, it's kind of a hazy day today, but I want to show you the Castelluzzo. This is where they threw Waldenses down from this high precipice, way up here on top. You can imagine climbing three to four hours from the valley floor, knowing that you would be thrown off this cliff. It was a time when faith hung on to the promises of God. As 7,000 French soldiers were sacking the towns in the valleys below, Waldenses were thrown off this very ledge, down to the rocks below. Like the mighty men of Old Testament fame, God raised up men of valor in latter times. One of these was Joshua Janavel. En medio de, de ese momento de tragedia, in, in the middle of the, the tragedy, Josué Janavel está aquí. Joshua uh, Janavel is here. Oh. Entonces vienen a avisarle que el valle estaba en llamas, que están matando a la gente. So they come to tell him that the valley is on fire and they are killing our people. Josué tenía un conocimiento muy grande del territorio. And he had a well known, a good knowledge of the territory. Mm -hmm. Él podía en pocas horas moverse por senderos en la montaña y estar aquí, y luego estar del otro lado, hablar, coordinar, y empezó a juntar las personas para defenderse. He knew how to get around here with no problem at all. <laughs> he had it memorized. <laughs> That's right. So they, he gathered the people, said, let's come together to defend ourselves. Yo creo personalmente que su nombre Josué era profético. I believe that his name Joshua was prophetic. Amen. <laughs> Porque lo que Dios hace a través de este hombre hay del increíble. Because what God did through him is unbelievable. After hiding the old, the young, and the women behind a mountain, he gathered a small army of six men. It's a historical fact that it was Joshua that was the first to use guerrilla warfare, which Napoleon used in his battles, which he learned from Joshua. It's interesting that this form of warfare helped Napoleon to bring to an end the papal control by taking the Pope captive in 1798. So it was that Marcus D. Pineza's 500 papal soldiers were defeated by muskets, arrows, and slings, and also swords, from only seven men. Instead of learning his lesson, General Pineza's embarrassment pushed him to try again. So he gathered 600 men and used deceit to make it look like the first attack was an accident of misunderstanding. By this time, Joshua Geneville had 19 men, including himself, and once again the papal armies were forded. 
So General Panezza used deceit again and gathered 900 men against 19. But Genovelle hurled rocks and stones and bullets and crushed the papal soldiers beneath the mountain. He began fighting what is called the guerrilla war. <laughs> Y hoy día es considerado un héroe no solo para los valdenses sino a nivel a nivel de la región. So today is considered a hero not just among the Waldensians but also in this region. Porque fue el primero en que ideó el sistema de autodefensa de the guerrillas. He was the first one that thought of a way of self-defending themselves as guerrillas. Interesting. Uh, transportar la guerra eh, en territorio del enemigo. Is to take the war and into the territory of the enemy. Y gracias al conocimiento que él tenía del territorio, and because he had a good knowledge of the territory, he logra en, en pocos días organizar a los valdenses, a los a los pocos hombres que quedaban, juntarlos y hacer una fuerza, una fuerza de resistencia. In just a few days, he was able to gather all the men that remained. There were not too many of them, mm -hmm. and to create a resistant movement. Era un hombre lleno de fe, como dije antes. He was a man of faith. Amen. Y incluso cuando él se, se retira al exilio, when he eventually goes into exile, mm -hmm. en el, uh, algunos años después, nuevamente hubo otra, o, otro ataque. A few years later, there was again another attack. Y uh, los valdenses estaban ya extremados. And, and the Valdenses were exhausted. Mm -hmm. Y uh, el duque ofrece a los valdenses una paz, una tregua. And then the duke says, uh, let's, let's, let's make, they have a truce, they have a, let's make a deal. A condición de que Janabel se vaya. On the condition that Janabel will go away for good. Mm. Y por el bien de su pueblo. And for the good of his own people. Con mucho dolor. With pain in his heart. Janabel se va al exilio a Ginebra. Then he goes to Geneva in Switzerland. Y vive sus últimos 25 años. And his last 25 years he lived there. En el exilio. In the exile. Well, so where is he buried? ¿Dónde está enterrado? Él está enterrado en el antiguo cementerio de Ginebra. In the old cemetery in Geneva. Uh -huh. Geneva. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and look at this house and uh, see what's inside. Let's go. Vamos a ver. Okay. Vamos. Abrimos la puerta. Okay, so we're inside of Genevieve's house. Um, so what's what's this room and what's what's its importance? Estamos aquí dentro de la casa de Genevieve. ¿Qué es este cuarto, esta habitación que representa? Bueno, esta es la parte inferior de la casa. This is the basement. Oh. Eh, en que aquí se guardaba el alimento para los animales. Okay, the, the food for animals was stored. Oh, okay. La, generalmente las las casas antiguas eh, la parte eh, la parte baja eh, se tenían los animales yeah, usually, that time, the lower part of the house was the animals oh. y las familias vivían en la parte superior so the family was on top mm -hmm. eso permitía incluso uh, un, una, una calefacción ¿no? and it was kind of a, a heating system <laughs> <laughs> y uh, en este sitio Josué excava con sus propias manos ah. un, un túnel and, en la roca viva and here he himself uh, dug with his own hand this tunnel so he, he went actually with his own tools and hands. He dug this tunnel. Con sus herramientas, él y sus manos hizo este túnel. Él hizo este túnel en la roca, en la montaña. And it was right in the rock, in the mountain. Yeah, but for for a reason. ¿Para qué razón? Para eh, extremo refugio en momentos de peligro. It was a place of refuge oh. in times of danger. Mm -hmm. Había había se vivió un periodo de de gran aprehensión. There was a time, a period of time when it was very difficult to be here. Mm. Eh, las tropas mm, ducales, eh, los papistas podían venir en cualquier momento. People army could come anytime. Mm. A, a saquear, to sack, a matar, to kill, mm. a secuestrar. And also to, 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 um, to take the people and, and put them away. A secuestrar especialmente los niños. Especially children. Mm. Los católicos venían y secuestraban, se robaban los niños. And then the Catholics come and would take the children with them. Entonces, eh, en momento de extremo peligro, eh, se escondían por aquí. So in, in time of danger, danger, the family would hide in there. 
Si nosotros vemos al, al fondo del, del túnel, es, 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 está, el de Tamo, eh, él, él grabó sus iniciales. Sí, he, he inscribed his initials. Oh, really? Sí, uh -huh. al fondo. Oh, yeah. So how did how did they actually hide this opening? Ah, ¿cómo que podían esconder esta apertura que no fuera abierta por vista por hey, los Oh, yeah. 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 We can only go a few yards. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> no, no, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Let's go. See the year 1660? W G G. W eh, significa viva. And this means life. Viva Josué Janabel. Joshua Janabel. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful. Now where does the cave go from here? Does it go around the corner? Uh, back that way. It's solo hasta ahí. No, no, no. But, but right, right now it doesn't go anywhere. It's just okay. up here. Lo interesante que esto está... Está hecho por sus propias manos. Yeah, this is done by his own hands. Como yeah. es extremo, extremo eh, refugio en momento de peligro. Like a, a, a place of refuge, a hiding place. Oh. Yeah. Ahora estamos, este año, estamos recordando <coughs> el 400 aniversario de su nacimiento. Okay, this year we're celebrating 400 years of his birth. Y una de las frases más famosas de Josué Yagabel es, his most famous phrases is, es la que de, él, él nos dejó. Y de, dice así, que nada sea más fuerte que vuestra fe. Nothing be stronger than your faith. Gracias a Dios, eh, Dios usó su, su vida para eh, impedir el total exterminio de los valdenses. Um, by the grace of God, God used that man to avoid that the Valdensians would be extinguished in this valley. Mm. Hoy no estaríamos aquí. Today we would not be here. Pero eh, más allá de las proezas eh, humanas que logró hacer, but far beyond what he did, peleando contra eh, dos países, fighting against two countries, y no teniendo nada, and having nothing. Mm. Eh, nos dejó un legado espiritual, moral, muy grande. Cuando él vive en el exilio en Ginebra, When he went to, uh, Geneva, Switzerland, mm -hmm. él permanentemente trató de, de organizar el regreso de los valdenses. Él debe estar aquí. How long have you been here? Y el principal de los pastores valdenses, y el principal de los pastores valdenses, and, and the main pastor of the valdenses le dijo, said, nuestra fe está aquí desde la época del obispo Claudio. Our faith is here since the time of Bishop Claudio. Oh. Incluso antes. Even before him. Claudio fue un obispo. Claudio was an bishop. Que fue eh, que fue eh, martirizado por la iglesia. Right. That he was killed by the church. A causa mm -hmm. de su fe apostólica. Because he had an apostolic faith. That's right. Y Napoleón lee la, eh, las instrucciones de Janabe. Uh, Napoleon read the instruction of Bonaparte. Y queda sorprendido de la técnica militar de este hombre. And he was shocked to see the, the, the strategy, the military strategy in that paper. Y aplica las técnicas de Janabel al ejército francés. And then he applied the techniques there to the French army. Let me, okay, let me get this right. Now you're telling me that Henry Arnaud. Me, es, me, para yo poder tener una, una figura completa quiere, quiere decir que Arnold el pastor Arnold he understood the apostolic history of the Waldenses él entendió la historia apostólica de los Waldenses sí going all the way back to the first century yendo aún hasta el primer siglo de la era sí. cristiana and sí. how it came across the Alps into sí. Italy y cómo pasó los Alpes y llegó a Italia 
This is very amazing news because it, what you're saying goes right along with ancient history. Porque lo que está diciendo realmente está colaborado por la historia antigua. Sí. And today a lot of people are trying to change that history. Y mucha gente hoy día no lo entiende y está tratando de cambiar la historia. That the Wallensies started with just Peter Waldo. Que piensan que los Valdenses comenzó con, con Pedro Waldo. No, no. Ah, le da forma a, una, a un testimonio, pero cuando llega aquí... Yeah. Waldo, what he did was that he established the people here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Encuentra personas que que eh, condividen esa fe uh -huh. porque había una raíz ya antigua. So when 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 he got here, then he found even people that were already apostolic See, in the faith. Yeah. So uh -huh. so if that's the case, if if the Wallensees go all the way back to apostolic times, that means that the papacy is the counterfeit. Es decir que si los valdenses van hasta el primer siglo de la era cristiana con los apóstoles y demás, uh -huh. quiere decir que la iglesia católica es ahora una iglesia falsa al decir que tiene la premacía apostólica. Lo fue siempre. Es, ya, that's a, that's a, that's all has been the case. It's a false counterfeit. Nosotros, eh, es, esta no es la postura de la iglesia valdense actual. Uh, to say it's not the position of the Valdense church today. No, Pero so. nosotros, los valdenses que aún predicamos la, la verdad en Cristo. But we, the Waldenses, who are true to the gospel of Christ. Que creemos eh, fehacientemente. We believe 100% que la población de estos valles that the population in these valleys tiene una raíz apostólica tiene apostolic roots okay so the Wal la so the Walden sees the spirit of the Walden sees is calling us back to apostolic faith so así que la fe de los valdenses nos debe llamar a regresar a la fe apostólica exacto yeah. exacto en en esto en este territorio in this place se refugian cristianos perseguidos por Nerón Christians that were persecuted by Nero Uh -huh. <laughs> y ahí queda la fe apostólica de generación en generación. And, and, and Cuando Valdo es expulsado de Lyon, and, and he remained in the apostolic faith since Neo time. Oh, so man. when Peter Waldo is, uh -huh. is cast out, out of Lyon, uh -huh. France, Valdo es excomulgado y echado de Lyon. He is excommunicated by the church in Lyon. Right, right. Y en, inicia a predicar el evangelio en todo el sur de Francia. And then he began to preach the gospel in the southern France area. Uh -huh. y aproximadamente en 1180 pasa las montañas y viene aquí y aquí, aquí eh, se, es, se estima que estuvo ocho años and he was here for eight years. Yeah, y aquí el movimiento valdense eh, permaneció a través de los siglos so here the valdense have been throughout centuries en el resto de Europa el movimiento valdense fue perseguido y extinguido. So in the rest of Europe the, the Waldensians were exterminated. Pero aquí no. Not, not here. Not here. Aquí hay una raíz apostólica. So like, so like, apostolic root here. So like the Ostrogoths, the Vandals and the Heruli were completely exterminated. Como las tres eh, tribus que fueron exterminadas eh, por los Herulos, los Vándalos y los Herulos. Satan wanted to get rid of the Waldenses the same way. También Satanás quería eliminar a los Valdenses de la misma forma. Sí. And but God used this man to keep this heritage alive. Pero Dios usó este hombre para mantener esa herencia viva. Exacto. That's fantastic. Un, una de su, una de sus frases en las instrucciones. Una de sus the one of his phrases in the instructions. Eh, es esta. Is here. Okay. Dice el que espera en el Dios viviente. The one that is waiting on the living God. Nunca perecerá. Will never die. Nada sea más fuerte que vuestra fe. Nothing should be stronger than your faith. Si todo el mundo estuviera contra ustedes, If everybody is against you, y ustedes solos contra el mundo, and you alone against the world, ustedes no teman tan solo, ustedes teman tan solo al omnipotente. You only fear God. Que es vuestra salvación. And he is our salvation. Y este año 2017 and hemos recordado los 400 años del nacimiento de Josué. So this year, celebrating 400 years of the birth of Joshua. Fantastic. You know, if you took your glasses, can you take your glasses off? See the, the resemblance. Hace unos años usaba bigote y me decían, es igual, es igual. Well, praise God. Let's go and see what else you have to show us.
Okay, Stefan, um, I see you have this uh, coat of arms. Can you explain this to us, what this is about? Bueno, um, tener un escudo no significa necesariamente <coughs> eh, que sea una familia de origen noble. It doesn't mean because we had a coat of arms that it belongs to the loyalty or to the royal family. Uh, los escudos eran en el medioevo representa representaciones de uh, un origen. The coat of arms was a representation of our origin. I see. Mm -hmm. Sentence. Y uh, entonces el el león mm -hmm. lion habla de Josué Janabel, el llamado León de Rora. And he was called or named the Lion Aurora. Oh. Los valdenses le, le pusieron ese, ese, ese nombre por eh, la defensa de Aurora. Because he was able to defend that little city. Cuando mm. fue eh, la masacre de la Pascua Piemontesa. When it was the massacre in 1556. Eh, la Biblia, the Bible, que es la base de nuestra fe. Is the base mm -hmm. of our faith. La palabra mm -hmm. de Dios. The word of God. Y, la cruz Hugonote, the, the Huguenot cross, uh -huh. que es, es la única cruz evangélica que usaban los protestantes en Francia y los valdenses para diferenciarse de los católicos. It was the only cross that was used by the Huguenots uh -huh. in France and the valdenses here to differentiate uh, themselves from the Catholics. Okay. La cruz Hugonote es básicamente la antigua cruz de Jerusalén. Uh -huh. It's a cross of Jerusalem con las ocho puntas the, the, the eight points, que uh -huh. significa que Dios está en todo lugar it means that God is in everywhere, ¿no? uh -huh. el renuevo de la fe Then the, the renewal of faith, que es lo que une a cada punto that unite every point, uh -huh. y la, la, la paloma que es el Espíritu Santo And the dove, the dove. Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. y que es uh, justamente la revelación de la reforma that is also the revelation of the reformation. y el uh -huh. arado como origen Humilde, origen, origen trabajador. Los valdenses todos han sido familias humildes, trabajadoras y llenas de fe. And the tiller means they were farmers, humble, plain people, uh -huh. not much money, but they were willing to, to work the land. Amen, amen. So our, our prayer is that the Spirit of God will work on His people in these last days. And that we'll be faithful like the Walden Seal. And that's my hope and my desire. Because throughout history, in Israel then, and then in the Christian Church, there has always been a remnant that has been faithful Amen. and loyal to God. Amen. La obra de Dios es es un es, es espíritu, es agua que corre. No, no la podemos no la podemos atrapar. The work of God is, is is like a river, like the Spirit. It's everywhere. We, you cannot trap it. Amen. Y Dios ha usado seres humanos a través de los tiempos. Y cuando estos seres humanos a veces han mirado eh, sus propias conveniencias, Dios va a usar a otros para llevar la verdad. And throughout history, God has been able to use simple human beings. And when they begin to create a name for themselves, then God places them aside, and then he has to use somebody else. Across the river in Lucerna is the old part of town, which is prominently Roman Catholic. The antiquity of this place was very enchanting. Here is a perfect example of the unity of church and state. This is the state on this side, and as you can see behind me, the church. Okay, uh, we're over here. And uh, in the uh, uh, Lucerna, uh, which is a little Catholic village across the river uh, from Torre Pelice. And here we have an old tower. This is a, a convent, an old church here. And this uh, tower is over 400 years old. And uh, this uh, motto on here is actually, it says, uh, light in darkness shining. And uh, it seems to me like it's very, very similar to the ones that we see on the Waldensian churches, which is pretty amazing that they were trying to show that they're the ones that had the light.
This town's symbols and architecture tells us that there is a very heavy Jesuit influence here. At the top of this church is the three six clover with the eye of Horus, which shows the cultic luminary connection to the Church of Rome. Just a few blocks over is a convent called Santa Maria, which is now a psychiatric hospital. And uh, this was a, actually uh, a, a convent of Santa Maria of the Annunciation. Annunciation. And uh, it was uh, uh, in the uh, 15th century, it was uh, donated from the uh, uh, Mission of the Propagation of Faith, which is the uh, Inquisition. And uh, we have uh, information that this place right here, which is now a psychiatric hospital, uh, it actually was the center of the Inquisition here in the uh, Peliche Valleys. And this is where they used to bring the Waldensian children and uh, keep them, uh, kidnap them, and bring them over here and raise them, uh, educate them uh, to, uh, to be uh, Catholic. Okay, Ron, we've been looking at a lot of old houses today and, and uh, a lot of beautiful walls and architecture and all kinds of things, but uh, what's, what's so big a big deal about this wall? Uh, this is another one of those places that the tourists never come to, but uh -huh. our Waldensian guide showed me this a few years ago, and it's a very uh, sacred spot for me because in 1683, there was a Waldensian pastor that gave his life for, for the Lord. They wanted him to join the Mass and, and uh, go back and abjure his faith and Protestantism and, and his Waldensian beliefs, mm. and he wouldn't do it. And so they started putting him in this wall. They were building a wall here, and they got him. They built the bricks up about to his waist, and they said, now will you abjure your, your faith? And he said, no. They went up to his neck, and they said, no. He said, no, and finally they just buried him alive. His body is right in here right now. And uh, this is a site that most people don't ever hear about because the buses can't turn around up here. No. But uh, he's waiting for Jesus to come. Amen. And I'd like to be here when Jesus comes and see him come out of that wall. Wouldn't that be amazing? Oh, my gosh. I mean, so, hanging on to faith yeah, right to the very end. Right to the end. And so and just another one of those things where somebody gave their life for Jesus and uh, in a very unique way. But. Uh, I'm sure he's waiting for Jesus to come, and I hope to meet him there. Amen. In our next program, we will see a dungeon where many gave their lives for the truth. As we look at the great Castelluzzo behind this cross, it is a silent reminder of the blood that was shed for those that followed their Savior by bearing their cross, even the cross of martyrdom. In our next program, we will continue to study the persecution of the Waldenses. I hope you'll join us.